Banter Podcast with Cole and Jettis. Yeah, get her back. <laughs> Hide your wrists. Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh, I put that on just for you. I um, I noticed. I put this on just for you. Just for you. <laughs> <laughs> Are we rolling? Let's go for it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Jenner Banter Podcast. Uh, this might well become one of our six-part specialist podcasts that we might put out in the next while. Six parts? Well, there'll be six different guests. All right. Oh, You're all right. number one. All right. Ladies and gentlemen... Nico Leonard. Now, if you're not familiar, how, how would you describe yourself to other people, just for the just for the listeners? It's funny enough, in the car we had this conversation, how would I describe myself? And 99% of people would say, this fucking mad Dutch guy. Yeah. In Belfast. Yeah. That is on YouTube. Because if it was a year ago, I would have said... The watch guy. Watch expert and, you know, watch shop owner. Yeah. But then it's gone pretty fucking nuts. I lost that reputation, like. You've lost that <laughs> reputation? I swear. So, I swear. So you were just running that shop and then got some YouTube boys on board and now you're an uh, internet superstar? I wouldn't call myself a superstar, mate. But uh, things have escalated. Like, I mean. They've gone pretty crazy. <laughs> well, we're, we're, we'll, we'll not get ahead of ourselves. The first thing anyone asks, you know, a quote-unquote foreigner is, well, how the fuck do you end up in Northern Ireland? Because if... Most people here had the opportunity to go anywhere else, they would do so. Mate, I genuinely, and I always, I, I get this question every single time I say, or p- people are, oh, you're Dutch? Why the fuck did you move? Yeah. I mean, Northern Ireland, genuinely, is one of the most beautiful countries in the world. I love this place. I will literally die here. Yeah. Done. Unless the government kicks me out because I'm... A European citizen. Yeah. I haven't, I, f- I forgot to put that settlement status in, right? So I just, I was watching TV and then you need to put this EU settlement, blah, 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 for yeah. people that aren't from, are not from here. Yeah. Like me. But I was like, I still haven't, I still don't know if I'm allowed to stay, funny enough. How weird. That's so weird. But uh, no, why did I move? It's like, I just, I, I always wanted to travel. I wanted to see the world. And my first stop was Belfast. <laughs> and I never fucking left. <laughs> I never left. Yeah. Did you try anywhere after that? No. Like, yeah, you like, like, I was going to go Belfast and then like Thailand, Vietnam. Yeah, you know, yeah. Okay. Southeast Asia. Now, the funny bit is I, I threw everything I owned in a, an old green Volvo V40. Nice. Right? Absolute fucking machine. 280,000 kilometers on the thing. Like, I mean, you wouldn't give it a penny, but it was a rocket. Like, yeah. So through everything I owned in there, <laughs> PlayStation 2 games. And <laughs> <laughs> I can eat this and I'm starving. A, a blanket and a cuddly toy or something. Yeah. And uh, I just drove and that's it. And uh, I, uh, I arrived in Belfast and I'll never forget the drive because I've never been on a, on a ferry with a car. Like I, yeah. I'm from the Netherlands, like we have canals this big. Yeah. Right. I mean, you just jump over it, if you know what I mean. Oh, like, yeah, or totally. you just jump in and swim and go to the other side or you can also just walk around it but <laughs> that's it. winter winter skate on it, i mean that's it but i like and i i saw this ferry from scotland going to uh, belfast and i'll never forget the drive off the ferry that you pass how do you call that uh, that oval building that l- big oval huge tower, ass, tower yeah, thing, ta- yeah the tower the big ass tower here and it's like fuck this is unbelievable yeah, you just hit that bit of Belfast. Yeah, like, it's like, this, that was, is, this is life. Yeah. <laughs> Genuinely. And I stayed, you know, uh, Upper Arthur Street, where that hotel is. Uh, you know, it's not Upper Arthur Street, but, you know, it's like there's a hotel, I think, Premier Inn. Right, okay. Stayed there for a week. And um, I think I got close with a few women there. I was like, this, is, this place is, he- this is a heaven, like. Nice. I this is heaven. So I decided to stay, like. Uh, yeah, you got you're that exotic guy now. Uh, now you that see you're what over I mean? in Belfast, uh, got that accent. Where are you from? Where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> Amsterdam. Oh, yeah. Are you actually from Amsterdam? Or uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So um, no, it's good. It's, a, it's listen. It's a nice city, um, but for me, and and seriously, in, in all seriousness, Northern Ireland and the people, definitely the people in Northern Ireland or the island of Ireland. I don't give a shit. Right? For me, there's no difference. Um, and what everyone does is what they do. But I have received from the first day I arrived here so much love and so much help. And I had shitty jobs and I had yeah. whatever. And I made friends and all of a sudden it was such a different reality than the Netherlands in every yeah. way possible. 
Yeah, and it's it's weird. I was joking about like my wife's sister's fiance is Dutch, and he it's he's and then of, his cousin. Uh? And then his cousin as well. Oh, yeah. you're, I'm lost because you went so far. Sorry. Your wife, sister's cousin. No, wife, uh, sister's fiance, right? Wife, sister's fiance. So I don't. Is that like a brother-in-law type? I have no idea. But um, yeah, he's Dutch, and he he came over, and he was the same. He was like, I don't feel any pressure on me over here yeah. from like my parents. You, you know, we live out in the country, so he goes, I just love living out here with the space and everything. So he uh, he loves it too. Listen, for me, um, and definitely like. Definitely now looking backwards, like I started a business here that didn't go <laughs> without any uh, challenges, may I add. But I would have, I would have filled in every other country with that same business, genuinely. Really? The unconditional support without asking something in return or expecting something in return is what I've received from the people here in Northern Ireland. It is bonkers. Yeah. It is unbelievable. If I if I ask help in the Netherlands, ha, what's in it for me? Yeah, yeah. You see what I mean? And and any 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 other country it would be, um, except here. And I just I love this place. Yeah. It is a it is a real gap in the market though. Like as you said, there's no real dedicated luxury watch shops, is there? I mean, I was in Port Stewart the other day, and I walked <laughs> past a shop like a jeweler's, and there was a couple of Rolex in the window, and I was just like, oh, you know, even then I was like, fuck, you don't see many like. Aye. Shops with a Rolex, you know, especially <laughs> here, just at all. You don't see a jeweler's with like a Rolex in the window. Um, so yeah, I suppose it is a bit of a gap in the market. Like, I would, I wouldn't have seen say that it would have been a gap in the market there because Rolex, uh, there, there is a Rolex authorized dealer here. Where's that? Um, in the city, uh, you don't want to know them. Okay, oh, they were the only people, by the way, that really fucked me over many, many I'm sure. times. I'm sure, genuinely, like. From all the help I've always received, these guys, and of course we're talking about hey, the snobs, absolute <laughs> snobs in every way possible. Like genuinely, when I tried to open my shop, they have tried to avoid it in every way possible. Okay. In every way possible. Trying, they start with, selling like Omegas? You just no, no, no. Offer, <laughs> offering, money, offering money to stakeholders that owned the premises Okay. to then make sure that I will not be in there. Like constantly boycotting, like ah, oh, it's bonkers. Like I genuinely, from like that's I, I just I I've this, I'm so angry still, uh, still today. Uh, that's crazy. But, but they're not even we're they're they're not even we're we're a complete different different business in any way, yeah, shape, or because I didn't even know there was a, like a like a Rolex place. No, in Belfast. Yeah, in I Belfast. Know, I had no idea. Uh, it's it's uh, it's uh, I can say the name. Like allegedly, it's Lund's Jewelers. Okay. I saved myself there. Did you see that? Yeah. Yeah, because otherwise they go again. Truth bomb. Truth bomb. <laughs> Honestly, mate. Honestly. You know that they kicked me out of a sh out of the shop when I wanted to buy a pen as well? Bonkers. I'm not going I'm not going Anyone else just details. pops into Aeson's and he goes like, let me just pop it. Ah. <laughs> Lons here. Yeah, you see what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> what sort of pen do they sell in there? Uh, Mont Blanc. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, I never... I always wanted one. Never could have justified it. A good friend of mine, Ryan Burnett. He, he. Uh, shout out, shout out, shout R R B. Now this is just name dropping, mate. Um, he he wanted to buy a pen, and I was like, ah, "This is a good time. I'll buy myself a pen and a three, four hundred quid." I had yeah for that pen, and literally kicked me out. You have to go in now with like on somebody's shoulders with like a long trench coat. <laughs> I, I swear to God, with a fake beard on. I need to go in. Hello, as, <laughs> I, I need to go in uh, with a wig. <laughs> uh, but no, I I don't I I don't want to give them a penny, Fuck. penny. It's it's just sad. That's, yeah, that's mad. Like the stuff that I understand. I would understand if if it was like it said fucking Rolex above the door and it was like the Rolex dealership. But like, like we have stories from from customers that came in and then uh, wanted to check out their Rolex boutique and literally they their alleged allegedly their staff said, "How that watch is fake." I swear. I swear it's no joke. That's like, hilarious. and because it came from us, that's mad. Like, me, it's mad, mate. It's mad. How would they know? That's crazy. They wouldn't because it's 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 all it's it's just to try to destroy someone else's reputation, and they've done that before with a uh, with the jewelers in um, Enniskillen. So, oh, it's not going to be a rant about them today, by the way. That's cool. Sued. Done. Allegedly, uh, everything was alleged. We'll way. bring it back to you. How do, how do you so like? Were you 
in the watch business before you came over here or was it just like a an interest that you had or no i uh, like um <clears throat> neither was n i wasn't in the watch industry neither was any of my family in the watch industry mm -hmm. um i was always been obsessed with watches from a young age um and like I never thought that I would that it would be achievable or possible for me to either own a Rolex or handle a Rolex or that was one of my dreams to ever do that. But yeah. I I came into a, a country that was completely new for me, and at a certain point you need to start to make a few quid. Like I mean, yeah, <laughs> you can't just talk about it the whole day. Like yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, just hanging out that Premier Inn, just uh, chatting the chicks. <laughs> exactly, exactly. At that time, I was quite kind of trim like i oh, mean yeah. i i i was in i was in the market boy like <laughs> <laughs> i tindered it like i fucking finished it mate <laughs> <laughs> oh my god but no um uh no it, it for me it was it was my i have two big passions football and watches and uh <laughs> didn't make it as a footballer <laughs> so um i uh actually i like i was in Northern, I actually was working in Dublin. Now we need to. I'm I'm just jumping up from A to Z. Welcome the, to the General Banter Podcast. Yes, there you go. Nothing is linear. No, no, <laughs> nothing. It doesn't yeah. make any sense. But no, I had I had a job here. What do you call it? Call center here in Belfast again. Uh, can yeah, Concentrics. That one. Concentrics. I was. I saw. I got a job there for Dutch speakers, right? So I uh, dogs bollocks. Like I'll fucking nail that. Fired within two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, mate. I swear. It could have been three, but not more than a month, <laughs> right? I swear. So I got fired there, um, and then that was my first uh, um, work experience in Belfast. And I had another place, MRP as well for Dutch people speaking Dutch, whatever. It's such a quality speaking Dutch. Yeah, useless. Um, got fired there as well, but that, that took six months, I think, instead of so I stretch it. Getting better getting because better. I was a bit mad. I was a bit of a mad whore. Okay. So I was running around like. <laughs> anyway, um, and um, yeah, at a certain point, you need to get serious in life. So um, I was able to get a really like a lead generation call center job at Vodafone in Dublin. Nice. And I says, I'm not gonna fuck this up. I'm not gonna fuck this up. Three and a half years later, I uh, had a few promotions under my belt, and um, um, yeah, I done well. And then at a certain point, I saved a few. Uh, I saved ten thousand euros, and then I literally, at a split morning, like this was the most random decision I've ever made in my life. I drove in the office, so I lived in Banbridge, County Down, and I drove every day for three and a half years to Carrick Mines, that's on Junction Fifteen on the M50, um, every day. Right, mm -hmm. so that that that's that's a heavy drive, right? So, <laughs> at a certain point, I was like, I can't handle this anymore. And that morning, where I was so tired, I was like, I'm gonna quit my job right here, right now, and I'm gonna do what I've always loved. I had saved ten thousand euros, quit my, literally walked into the office, wrote my resignation letter on a piece of paper, left it, left the building, went to AIB Bank, uh, which was around the corner of the office. <laughs> because I always I, I saw these 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 posters with loan approved within within five minutes or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I swear, and um, <laughs> I literally walked in, got a loan approved within five minutes. I swear, twenty thousand euros, thirty thousand euros on my bank account. I'm out. I'm 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 gonna sell watches. Yeah. And, and what, what's the move from then? You buy some watches, or do you try and some, look for a premises, or what do you do? No, no, no. Like, I mean, a shop wasn't even realistic. All I wanted to do is make make fifteen hundred pounds a month because that would have set yeah. me that would pay the rent. You could go out for dinner, and that time my uh, my ex fiance um, was studying, so that would have paid for us. You see what yeah. I mean? She had a part time job, um, <laughs> so all I wanted was fifteen hundred quid a month, and uh, <laughs> but you know what? When you take a loan, you also kind of need to pay it back yeah, right? yeah. So I, and you do that in installment every month yeah but i forgot that so yeah. i was constantly buying watches on ebay or something and then selling it and making 50 quid making 100 quid yeah. i swear yeah. like it was 50 pounds 100 pounds and i was like oh shit i need to pay the rent and then i need to pay the the monthly installment back yeah but like at a certain point i need to make a choice yeah, but uh, a choice if I need to pay my rent or the installment. But where it really started for me was I bought some watches online, 
And what sort of watches are you buying at that level? Uh, I bought a Tudor, a Tudor Black Bay, a Tudor Blagos, a Bretling Nevy Timer, which I still have because no one wanted that fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's for sale, special price only for you that watch here. <laughs> I give you a special discount. <laughs> right. Um, but uh, I still have that fucker. Like, um, so funny. And uh, what else was that? Oh, yeah, a Rolex, a, um, a 36 millimeter Datejust, which I lost uh, about 600 quid on. So all the profit I made was gone on that loss. And that oh, he didn't so. lose the watch. Uh, right, okay. So that's that's mad. Like, and then how did the shop come about? Was that like the next step? Nah, the, the step was, like I, I, I opened an Instagram and I have such an awkward, I still have the first video I ever took. So I'm, I'm not really a person that likes to be in public or do on camera stuff. It, it scares the living life out of me, right? Um, Doesn't seem like that now. No, but like I'm still a bit uncomfortable. Like, but yeah. you get used to it, fake it till you make it, right? Um, but I still have that first video, what I ever took. I'll show you that. I can show you. Hello. Hello. One of those 80s, like, infomercials. I swear, watch bum, this. Bum, 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 bum. Watch this. It's mad. Like, my voice and how I look. I look like I've been hit by a truck. Really? Like, I genuinely. <laughs> so, um, I opened an Instagram account, and I was just looking at who who is popular in Belfast, right? So, who's doing business in Belfast? And this is where I come back to what I said before. The, the unconditional will to help someone without asking something in return. Mm -hmm. And that was Chris Suter. Chris Suter... I don't know if you know him, the guy who sells suits, right? Yeah, I, I know who he is, yeah. yeah. I don't think I've met him. No. Like, he's a mad her, right? He's a mad bastard. Mad bastard. He annoys me every single day with a bollocks GGG, right? And I tell him that every day, right? Stop doing that GGG. It annoys me. I just don't want to see you every morning. You see what I mean? <laughs> get up, get out, get the fuck, right? Done. <laughs> get out of my face. Get out of my face. I love him to bits. But his will to help me and put my name out there was the change from selling one watch a month to selling one watch a week. Yeah, because it's a similar kind of, it's not a similar business, but it's, you know, it's luxury. It's, you know, it's that world where like you would have good clients probably. Ah, yeah. So, and all of a sudden, um, like all of a sudden I was like, like people that like he called me, yeah, someone is interested in the watch. He never asked for a penny, right? So yeah. I was actually trying to find that video. I'll, show, I'll try to find it later on. But it, it's embarrassing, right? It's like I'm wearing these weird glasses as well. Like, I mean, like proper weird. I look like an absolute weirdo. Um, uh, but, and he is cause, yeah, there's someone in the shop. Uh, come to the shop and show your watches. And, and by that time, I had a Rolex. I had my first Rolex for sale or Speedmaster for sale. <laughs> And then he started to, he started pr promoting me with his friends, and then uh, we had uh, we had a few people buying a watch, and then instead of making fifty quid, they made five hundred quid, mm -hmm. and that's literally how it went. And all of a sudden, I was just in Chris's shop every single day, every single day. I was in Chris's shop to sell watches, it's just crazy. to be hanging about. Like he like the stuff that he's done for me. Has been the key. It's been that l that one push that you yeah. that someone needs. Yeah. And 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 I have I owe him for that because it, like we now have an incredible team. We're probably about 12, 14 people. So. And I hope you got Chris with Casio to say thanks. No, I gave him a wee Casio there the other yeah. day. Like, <laughs> yeah. Threw it at him in the street. <laughs> the fuck out. There you go, you <laughs> boy. That's amazing. That's fucking amazing. And we'll talk more about watches because like. It is. It's a. It's such a weird, specific world. Like part of the f reason you can go on YouTube and start making watch content, and obviously, pr you know, be funnier than everybody talking about watches. So it rockets up there. But it is because it is. It's this little like community Aye. of watch people, Aye. and there's all sorts. You know, there's like, I like the guys who talk about a whole range of watches. You know, like this is the watch that you. You know, if you have fucking fifteen hundred pound, or if you have five grand, or whatever. Um, but it is—it's such a weird thing, isn't it? The community itself is, uh, the watch community is such a tight community, and it's very hard to penetrate. Just it's weird, yeah. right? So it actually started. You know, the brand Panagai. Mm -hmm. That's where the real—that was the first club, the Panaristi. The really? first, yeah, it's fucking bonkers, mate. But it is. Um, 
nowadays uh, watches are like luxury watches are expensive right it's luxury define yeah. the word luxury it's it's something you have to work for it's it's not easy uh, uh, obtainable um but that a community and and definitely the youtube community and the stuff people that i always watch to all of a sudden saw this weird guy screaming in a camera yeah and didn't know what to think of it and now the channel is i think the second biggest youtube channel in the world on our subject and it had us in 10 months and all these guys that i watched when i was younger mm -hmm. from when i was younger when i was like Young like kid, yeah. When I was like, I mean, YouTube wasn't there, but when YouTube started, all of a sudden these guys were like, I don't know what to do with this. I don't know what to think of this guy. Yeah. Like, do I hate him? Do I like him? And so I'm like, it's so funny. Like, yeah. Well, I think it's like, you know, if you have like strong opinions about something, but then no, like, so such specific details about things, I think they probably are like, well, I obviously knows his shit. Like, but. All right. But he is trashing like big watch brands and stuff like that. How do, explain the pay because, like, I like watches. I'm not a mad enthusiast, and I don't really know that much about them. But I sort of know like what I'm looking at vaguely uh, sometimes. I, but a lot of people wouldn't even know where the value in a watch comes from. Let me let me turn this around. Why do you like watches? What was your first watch? I think my dad got me like a Timex Expedition. Do you still have that watch? I fucking did till like uh, I found it like probably a couple of months ago and I left it in my pocket and I put it in the washing machine. Fuck yeah. Ruined it. Was going to give it to my son. Um but can I can I can I come back to what I was I was going to give that to my son. Yeah. Right? And this is exactly the reason why watches are so special because there's no oh, yeah. object in the world where where you can really do that. Yeah. You, what someone then can wear every this, single this is like day. A fucking 30 quid watch or something, you know. Exactly. Like the value sits in the sentimental value. There's not many people as we as man, as Harry proper man. I don't know why I said Harry. Yeah. But <laughs> man can really carry every single day. Yeah. And enjoy every single day and look at it every single day and, and have a memory of that and even ha hand it down to another generation. Like, yeah. name me one thing, like a fucking shirt. But, like, I mean, you can't wear it every day. You need to wash it sometimes, yeah. mate. Like, Guys aren't really wearing a lot of jewellery otherwise. So, for me, a watch is the only legitimate jewellery a man is allowed to wear. A wedding ring is a prison sentence. Done. Shout out. Um, yeah, yeah. There, There is that. And I have watches, like, you know, I have, like, a red version of that that I got as a gift before I did, like, the SSA Arena. Uh, this is a hundred quid watch, but uh, I'm like, that's the fucking one that's in the, you know, in the pictures. I, and brought a, I brought a watch for you. Like, I mean, obviously I'm not going to leave you left-handed. I forgot my bowl with sweets, but <laughs> I thought it was so funny. Oh, that's right. There you go. Oh, fucking hell. There you go. A proper got there watch boy. Oh yeah. I'll open it live. But like, even, even like the value of watches, there's a sentimental thing. But like, you'll know ev every time you put this watch on or you see this, you'll 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 be reminded of my stupid face whenever you see this one for the first time. Let me put a stupid face on. <laughs> I'm scared in case I already. Ha oh no, I don't have this. One. No, exactly because they're absolutely sold out because I probably bought all of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? You can wear it and see th you see your tattoos are still visible. I know, but I need to put a bit of fake tan under this watch. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Look at that. They they are tough to get, aren't they? They are. The see through. I got uh, I got your producer legend. What was your name again? Niall. <laughs> Niall. Uh, can I throw it over the thing? It's he'll reach it. <laughs> ah, he's like, <laughs> get it, get it, get it. You can give away a few watches to people as well if you want. Because uh, you, you were talking about sweet bowls and stuff. Sweet bowls? You know, yeah. this, is this, guy, this watch is so important. He's like Oprah, the Oprah of fucking yeah. uh, digital watches. Like, this, is, this watch is so important. You've no idea. Right. Like, Why? this watch de detonated bombs in Afghanistan. Like, I mean, genuinely, Osa no, uh, what do you call it, President? Barack Obama wore this. This watch is worn by proper legends, like yeah, like massive, like how do you call them, uh, singers and stuff. Wore this watch. This is so important. This watch. Is it just? Is it because it's just the absolute entry? No, it's the god tier. The god tier. This is this is this is cult. This is cult. This is a cult watch. 
Why? Just because it's just because it is because it's warm. Because it, it is like like why is? I wanted to say something smart, but I forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, welcome to the John and Public Podcast. <laughs> yeah, I forgot it. <laughs> I want to say something. No, I forgot. But no, this is class, mate. So you can give away a few of these watches if you need, if you want to give away more. Uh, we're, we're, we actually give them away on the street in Belfast, like genuinely. Okay, no, no, is my fat hand going to be too? Look at that. That's class, boy. Obama. <laughs> uh, cute. That's so cute. Um, but other th other than sentimental value, how do you explain watches to people? It tells the time. Yeah. yeah. And to most, to a lot of people, they'd be like. So does fucking my phone. Yeah, you know? exactly. But now comes the thing, right? Do you... It, 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 it's, it's, it's something so magical and special that people can't explain it. Yeah. Because you can buy that. It, it's, it's a product that we don't need. Like yeah. We need to see time, right? We, we do, but we don't need an expensive watch. Yeah. But people still want to spend money on it. People still find it so important. Because it is way more than a watch. Yeah. I, I just want, to, want you to understand that it's the, the reason why people spend that amount of money is not to tell the time. It's to either put sentimental value, make, commemorate something, be, commemorate an achievement, yeah. um, make a statement towards themselves. You see, I've done it. I can't afford it. Reward themselves. Yeah. There's so much more that goes into luxury watches sent with, with the thoughts and the sentimental value then then it's just an expensive watch like do you, i genuinely do you, do you see a lot of people who think that the first move when they make a bit of money is i have to fucking let people know are you cool with that not you know what I, or would you rather someone was like you know you, you could look at their watch and be like i know that watch is like 1500 quid but i know that this guy's probably in the watches because of that choice of watch and the funny bit is, I'm not much, I'm not in the shop that much anymore, right? So yeah. we have a really good team there, and and Tim and Paul, they're doing an incredible job, and like, so I, I miss that type of thing, right? I do, I miss that interaction. But the thing is, someone walks into the shop and says, "Ah, oh, give me that one," and you just wrap it up in ten minutes, done. And this happens, right? Mm -hmm. Ten, twenty grand, give me that one. This, this happens. I don't like that. Yeah, because it's a flex. It's just like it's just like fuck it. Yeah. I we had a we had a we had a kid in and his father and his this was for his 18th birthday bought a black bay last week black bay blue leather blue um blue strap beautiful watch we properly took time for up an hour and a half drink and explain him everything. yeah that is the stuff I love that's passion. he bought it for the kid the, oh yeah, yeah yeah the father bought it for a kid yeah and and passion above anything else that's for yeah. me personally but like I mean at a certain point you need to yeah you know, like we're running a business as well and and this is the this is the thin line of where where passion stops and where do you need to become a businessman yeah so i i have like i have a director now in a business who managed the entire business because i get too emotional with it yeah i just want to oh you want to want like i i would still take 50 quid margin like yeah i me i'm not i'm not a business yeah, just Mind, like, if, if there was a, a a nice customer and it was a cool story, yeah, and like, you're just I like, have, fucking yeah, take give it, it a cost, sure. no bother, mate. Well, half and, I, anyway. <laughs> and I've done this way too many times, and and and, and people in Northern Ireland say, like, again, the people of Northern Ireland, no, I want you to make money. Mm. In the Netherlands, they're fucking, oh, yeah, yeah, no, 100%, I'll take it, I'll take it and do a runner. Yeah. I, like, I, I am not that commercial i'm not a commercial mastermind in that way if you yeah. know what i mean for me it is about passion it's about it's about the actual like it is so unique wearing this right this is just an expensive watch right this means i think it's beautiful it's something i always wanted but there's no story behind this you do you just have access to it now? i have access to it yeah i genuinely don't give a shit if I lose this, it would be hurtful and painful for the wallet and blah, blah, blah. It's insured, so we get the insurance money back. Mm -hmm. But if I lose my grandfather, Seiko, uh, mate. Yeah, you'd be gutted, like. Uh, no, not I will not be, like, I'm yeah. done, like. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? And, like. And this is, this is, this cost, this is 120 grand. Uh, where that Seiko is, like, 50 quid. Yeah. You see, that's. <laughs> and you handed that to me in this office uh, where I, I spill coffee on this desk weekly. 
uh, but it's it's passion above anything else, and that's where where I've, where we've built the business on. Like, and and this is it's the most beautiful industry in the world. I have the best job in the world. Class. Um, yeah, I asked that question because I have I've seen people who jump in the fucking deep end with a Rolex or something. And you know, they're probably not even into watches, but they were like, this is the thing I do now. And you're kind of like, you know, do you really like that even? Or are you into, you know, For, is it just a bit of a fucking... At a certain point, right? And when I bought my first, like for me, it was... For me, Rolex was never attainable, right? So my father worked like his bollocks off to buy my mom for 10 years to buy my mom or her 26 millimeter. They just like um, for 10 years. So so he was able to give it for her 40th. Yeah. Right? So my mom turned 40. Um, this is like a million years ago. They're like 100 now. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> hello, mom. Hello. Yeah, if They're struggling with English. The, They're struggling with English. So. Uh, Be impressed. <laughs> uh, exactly. But no, like that fact that my father worked 10 years to, to save up and yeah. buy my mom that watch, that, that shit, that means the world, right? So for me, like, it's, I don't come from a background where stuff like that was handed. So yeah. the crown, as I always call it, the, the crown Rolex, was always something fucking magical yeah. in my life. Because yeah. I remember picking up that watch with my dad, like my dad and I, like we went to a city, um, Utrecht actually. Uh, to pick up that watch. I remember that whole walk and it was all so special. And that's where yeah. it really, really dawned to me, right? But um, it's not the fact for me personally that a Rolex is expensive because Audemars Piquet, Patek Philippe, Fashion yeah. Constantine, they're f f six times the price. Yeah. I, I, it's no, I don't, I don't have a vibe there. I don't feel that vibe, if you know what I mean. Yeah. I just don't feel it. So I rather, rather have Rolex. And people use that. Like a lot of people would buy Tech Heuer yeah. and then say, oh yeah, we'll move up to Rolex. Like, buy, there's never a wrong reason to buy a Rolex. And if people buy it to show off or whatever, I mean, it's their free choice, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I, totally. I am personally, I'm personally more on, you've achieved something, you've worked hard for I it. I think it's more, I, I see people where they, they, do, they get a Rolex and you go, I think you have a lot of other shit to take care of before. Ah, yeah. You spend that sort of money uh, the, on a, on like a watch. People say that watches as investments and blah, blah, blah. And I'm not a financial, like we get that question a lot. I'm not a financial advisor. Buy a watch that you want first. That needs to be yeah. your first watch. But you know what? Like, if you want to, if, if I, I, buy, I wear a watch for me and not for anyone else. Um, and, and, and that, that, but that's my point of view. And, and I just want to make sure that, that people, when they actually then make that decision yeah. to buy a watch, that they at least being educated properly. The like guy I, I had spoken to you online about there was like an explorer two or something, but at the time it was like I think I was just bored during a lockdown, no, and I, I was like fucking you know you should like, have bought that. I know. What, do you remember how much I quoted you? Yeah, it was like seven eight fifty or something. Mm. <laughs> yeah, uh, they're now they're about ten grand, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but again, but it's fine. Like I'm, it, it's not like. You didn't lose it because you didn't have it in the first place. Yeah, and I, w I would literally have, was just looking at watches all day and was like, oh, I could maybe get one of these now. Right. But it w like, I would rather tie it into an event. That's what I would rather do. Like, I'm doing the SSE in September. I'd rather fucking stay somewhere nice, swing past the shop, pick it up, go on stage. You know, I have it be cool. Then I was just fucking cutting the grass, sitting in my shorts. Like, <laughs> I want to show by this fucking watch. And it, the other thing is, and I a lot of it's about the only Rolex that I, I you see co coming right from the sort of Timex expedition that my dad got <laughs> me. I love a sort of like a, nearly like a tool watch, like a hard looking sort of tough watch. Yeah, that I wouldn't wear that. Good job I don't have one hundred twenty grand in my fucking pocket. But no, I actually was planning to sell it to you. Okay. <laughs> I'll swap you. Um, <laughs> but like, I couldn't pull that off. Do you know what I mean? It's not uh, my sort of thing, really. For me, I was like. I'm colorblind as fuck, right? But I knew that there was a blue dial, and I know this, this is kind of blue, so I thought, you know what, blue? Yeah. Still blue? Yeah. So. I just, I, I don't, even like a date just or something, you know, anything sort of shiny and gold <laughs> or something, it's not, it's not going to look good on me. Like, no. So thankfully, I... It, it, that's in your mind. Have you ever wore, uh, wore a Rolex for a certain amount of time? No. So let's change that. I'll put, I'll put a watch on your wrist for a month. See what you think. What size? 
I think a lot of them wrist. are quite small. You can have a fat wrist though. Thank yeah. Forty two millimeter minimum. Yeah, minimum, yeah. Minimum. I'd say so. Yeah. Would well, I be I'll, put, would I be I'll genuinely I'll put a watch on your wrist. We'll get that sorted tomorrow. Would I be more of a Panerai guy moving in that sort of world? Big. You need to buy what you really love. Yeah. The, like, like, this is this could that that would be your first luxury watch, right? What I always try to avoid is apart from that. Yeah, but that is that's God tier, mate. That's that's next level, right? You have luxury and you have, you know. Yeah. Like yeah, that is like cold status. Yeah. Uh, detonate bombs and stuff. <laughs> I'm not gonna make the Belfast comment. I'm not gonna make the Belfast comment. <laughs> but it actually did. Right. Uh, I did make the Belfast comment. <laughs> I can say that I'm not from here and I love this place. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Exactly. The war's over. Yes, good. As Mickey Bartlett would say, it was a draw. <laughs> oh my God. What's so you're, you're, what are you saying? Like if you, if you just have it on your wrist for a minute, you. But that's it. That's any watch. Do you ever like swap watches? No, and like, like fuck, this is big, and then you know, after like a day, or you. I say this. I may. I say to say this as a joke, but it's genuinely. Whenever you wear a Rolex and you walk outside, your balls grow that little bit bigger. Yeah. I swear. I swear. I can't. I have said this comment kind of in a funny way, but people actually text me and say, "Nico, you're so right." And so like, oh yeah, I know. <laughs> it's not the bills, mate. It's <laughs> <laughs> It's not the fillers of how I put no, them. No, but it, it gives you that extra like the first time I put a Rolex on, or I can't even I can't remember that, but the first time I bought my own Rolex, right? That vibe, that feeling, that accomplishment, that on its own was worth every single penny. Yeah, because I suppose it is just like a it's like a self-care type of thing where you're like, I'm <sighs> I'm doing this for me because I can do it and it makes me feel better. I suppose it's like, it's, it's like when people someone buys like fucking you know 800 pound pair of heels or something it's just something that's like a life achievement exactly but makes you feel fucking yeah way better exactly it makes you feel better it's so not necessary but it so makes you feel better and if you then also buy the right watch you wouldn't lose a penny either yeah. right and i'm uh, you were talking about investments like who gives a fuck about that? Why would you? Why would you be? What a terrible way to buy a watch. Exactly, terrible way. But it is a way of making money, right? Yeah. Fact. Um, but I think you should probably have. You know, it's like if you're buying a car, you wouldn't be like, "Is this going to be a classic in fucking fifty years?" But would you? Would you? Would you still define it luxury if it lo If you buy something and it loses eighty percent, is it then not? Is then the price setting not wrong? So if I want to buy an, if I buy an asset. That would just be like a trendy thing. Yeah. If I buy an asset, I don't want it to lose 80% at least. Like, even if I'm not planning on selling it, mm -hmm. I would like to, ha to have that value at least in the back of my head. Like, But now comes the thing, right? I don't have a penny on my bank account. I literally, no, no, I have a few pennies on my bank account, but it's not many, right? My savings account is my watch box. Yeah. Because I am, I'm not good with money, mate. If I have money in my, in my fucking pocket, I go mad. Yeah, I go ma buy cars, do this, do that. Like I'm just, I'm. I used to describe myself as Jay Z with a tenner. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like fucking. Who I, wants a round? Exactly. Can I have a lift. I go, I can't go if I go out for sash, right? Yeah. Proper sash. Like it's the most expensive thing because when then I have money in my pocket and then I'm buying everyone drinks. Yeah, it's like no bother, mate. Yeah. Like, I had some nights in Ollie's, like, thousands of pounds, like, and I was like... It's a lot of skittle bombs. And I'm like, what the fuck did I do? Like, you see, I, I'm not good with money. So what I do is I buy a watch. Yeah. So say he have, like, I saved up a certain amount, right? I buy a watch, put it in my watch box. Whenever I, have, whenever I need that money, in some way, shape, or form, or emergency, I put, sell that put, watch. Put it back in the... I sell that watch. In the mix. And then I have that money back. And mean, meanwhile, the value of the watches that I buy from that money is increasing because yeah. it kind of, kind of like, this is kind of what I do. Like, yeah. I mean, so I, yeah, especially in this day and age. So your money might as well be in a thing instead of just fucking. No, but there. for me, for me, that is a more safer way. And it's, it's, as a purist, it's hard to say. Your mates are like, do you want to go out to the Ollie's tonight? And you're like, I'm going to have to buy that 120 grand watch, I'm done. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be fucking skint. <laughs> exactly, mate. I'm, I'm, but I'm terrible at money. Like, yeah. Like, literally. And it's funny, like, you know, how many people 
would look at that watch and know what they were looking at. I would know, you know, what you it would, was, but would I know. wouldn't know the actual significance of like the color of the dial and how, how rare it is. From the proper pure watch enthusiastic, 25%. Yeah. Crazy. That know that this is the jumbo. They know that this is the boutique only. How many they people know? would see that and be like, was that like a Michael Kors or something? And you're like, for <laughs> fuck. <laughs> It's no, nice I colors. get the question. I get the question. Is that real? Yeah. In Belfast. I, mainly in Belfast, I get yeah. this. Is this real? Yeah. No. No. No, mate. None of it's real. No, no, it's fake, mate. Yeah. No, it's g genuine fake. Yeah. Yeah, like, why? I mean, that's the most embarrassing. You you would. You, well, obviously, you'd rather be wearing that. No, but you know, that's there, there's no right or wrong answer. Yeah. But someone, when someone asks you, is this is this real? Is it real Rolex? Who knows? Yeah. No, but there's no right or wrong. There's no. I can't. If you say yeah, of course you look like an arrogant prick. Yeah. If you say no, you're lying. Yeah. And if and you look like a dick because you're wearing a fake. But the problem is, like, what would a what would a fake version of that still cost you? Wouldn't have a clue, mate. Because I've seen, you know, they see all those videos online and they have fucking two watches beside each other and they're like, you know, which one's a fake? And they're like, yeah, the fake was still fucking. Two and a half grand or something. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, who the fuck? Why would you do that? Why would you get the fake version for for still thousands of pounds? Like, it's insane. Uh, it's bonkers. Like, the industry itself, did, like, I mean, you can say what you want, but having the replica market next to the real market, it's actually quite good because it, it introduces people that don't have a budget or younger people that don't have a budget to something to aspire to. Uh, yeah. So I'm saying something that is completely the opposite of anything I should be saying because I'm in this industry. But it is, in a way, good because it literally gives like the younger generation like oh a feel for it. Yeah, like it's weird. Like my I when I was 16, mate, I was rocking around with a fake well, fake Rolex as well yeah. because I couldn't afford the real deal. But therefore, I knew that I wanted that so badly. And yeah. I, I was wearing it for myself, not to show off. Like, yeah, I mean, like, you know, probably the main thing for someone who sells watches now is that a person that age is into watches. Yeah, I didn't even know what a fucking like an automatic watch was or what the difference was till fucking about five years ago. You know what I mean? Like, right. I was just like, oh, it's a watch. That one's a digital watch. You know, there, it. I wasn't even thinking about it. Uh, and now you have Apple Watches, right? Yeah. Cracker, right? Because that's so good for the industry. Because first people buy the Apple Watch on a, on this rubber strap thing, right? Where you pay like a fortune for it and it's rubber. Like, I mean, it's how to get fucked without saying that you're getting fucked. Yeah. Right? Um, and then the next step for people, for people that have an Apple Watch is to buy a lovely strap on it, mm -hmm. right? like a metal kind of mash strap, and that's what a lot of people do, and then they all of a sudden see it as a fashion thing. Yeah. And the moment they see it as a fashion thing, they're gonna think, traditional watch. Yeah. That's the next step. Yeah. The more people wear Apple Watches now, the better it is for the future for the watch industry. I know, and it's funny, because it's, it's, the, it's the one that probably should be the most expensive, the, the amount of technology in it, but... There's no craftsmanship there. Yeah. You know why a watch is expensive? Yeah, because it's like micro-mechanics. Explain me that one. <laughs> well, people, you know, people like the engineering. Exactly. Very, not, very not, in a very compact little area. So it's not the it's not the it's not the materials that that a watch is produced. Of course, it, it. This will answer my question earlier, which is like, why are they? Did you ask that question? Did I lose that question in my head? I am fucking no, ADHD. It was, it, was, it, it was it was definitely my fault. But like, it'll explain to people why these watches start to fucking jump up in money that has got to do with demand more than okay. anything right? not so, materials and no, like no, how no, complex it is no? no 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 you have Gerard Perigot making the best fucking sports watch in solid gold and still you can pick it up with five grand like mm -hmm. where a steel Daytona made out of steel it's worth five times six times the price yeah I mean it's not the materials really okay it's right? just, just the it's the demand that drives that price up but the reason why watches are m mostly expensive is is <laughs> the actual time of a Swiss watchmaker is the actual materials that is used on the dial, stuff like that. Uh, but as well, the brand and name, uh, Patek Philippe, the way the way they finish a movement, mate, a long and soon, it's bonkers, mate. And it's all handcrafted, handmade. Yeah, that's where the value is. Every single part, handmade. Yeah, wild. Put together, 
Wild 400 shit. parts in a in a perpetual 450 parts in a perpetual calendar mate yeah. there's a, there's literally a guy putting that together yes yeah. incredible madness it is madness like crazy and again some people would think about that and be like well sure he gives a fuck if that tells you the time or the phone tells you the time. it's exactly. not so, it's but it, like, it is how much value you put on it as a as a yeah. person like you see i i like i love stories yeah i just love fucking stories i can listen to bedtime story no back in the day I, I just love stories history fucking discovery channel galore like yeah. i mean i love that shit right and watches have stories the history of this watch the first the watch that saved the swiss watch industry that's this watch i love that story i don't have any sentimental uh, sentimental attachment to this uh, this exact watch but with this model i do yeah so there's a story behind that the saving of the swiss watch industry and i think that's fascinating do you reckon there's any watch companies that just, you know, they're like, send one of those to fucking Jay-Z there. Just have it land on his door, see what he thinks. Aye. And then the next verse comes out and he mentions the, the brand name. You know, I think it was Jay-Z or it could have been someone else. He had some flipping event and, and he sent invitations out. Mm -hmm. Or charity event, it was. And the invitations contained a Rolex Daytona. Yeah. He was bribing people. Yeah. You come to my, here's a watch, come to my event. I swear, I'd go. Could have been Jay Z or it, it was. Just I don't Jay Z's barbecue eating a hot dog. Aye, exactly. New Daytona, that's correct. I know, baller mate. I'll, go, I'll come to your charity auction thing. No, I, won't. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, funny like we will. Uh, we've I put up questions on the Patreon. We've a lot of a lot of questions. What is Patreon? Patreon is basically a platform that allows you to create like your own subscription service. So we have our public podcast. Yeah, and then I have a whole community over there, who I do extra content for. All right, but it's like a little community. Is it like OnlyFans? It's exactly like that. Do you have OnlyFans? No, it's Patreon. But I, I, I could have an OnlyFans. There's not. There's no real difference. I could get my dick out on Patreon too. Oh, but oh, no, never mind, mate. I, I don't want to see that. <laughs> I don't want to see that. Or not. Whatever. Or whatever. Uh, but. They're basically like the most dead on of the people who listen to this podcast. All right, they're, so they're they're like the private community, but they I put well, up, for OnlyFans. Do you pay? Do you pay for that? Do people pay? for Yeah, that? people pay in and, and they get this. Your support basically, so people support you with that. Well, yeah, it does. So it pays for all this shit, but Aye. the yeah, we do extra content for them, Aye, so they get more cool. podcasts and stuff like that. I'm not really into this digital world. Like, are you not? Second biggest fucking YouTube and yeah, but that game. that is the, I the the listen I I can't string one sentence together if I try. <laughs> These guys, my what? editors, <laughs> my editors are, are absolute bonkers, mate. They're legends. <laughs> like pff, Just, unbelievable. They make me look good. You see what I mean? <laughs> yeah. With the Next fuck time out, they make me look skinny. Boys. I like the one where you ripped the shirt off. That was fun. Uh, I might do that someday in here if we don't get some. Yeah. Fucking air conditioning. Uh, so we'll, we've got some questions. We'll yeah. skip. We'll skim through them. They're all uh, watch related, believe it or not. How does he feel about people who check time on their phone? But I think we've established it's not really about telling time, is it? <laughs> I, I, I really appreciate the question, but I have no idea how to answer it. Like I have no idea. It's like, how do I feel about them? Now yeah, they should be killed. They should be killed. They should be thrown in our room together with you and then <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Uh, what have we got? Uh, I have no idea. Thoughts on Ted Baker and fossil watches? I suppose that falls into the it's fashion, fashion watch. Oh, yeah. It's fashion watch. Yeah, fair play, like fashion. Like, I mean, it's just, it's just you can also go and buy that exact watch on Alibaba.com for like a fiver. Yeah. Yeah. They don't usually last that long. Mm. Um... Let me see, let me see. Best reasonably priced watch with a massive face on it. Rather than a load of cheap cheap ones and one expensive one. Mm. Pilot watch, maybe? Fucking G-Shock, mate. G-Shock? G-Shock for life. G-Shock, big God fucking... God, tear. Big face on it. Don, big face, big yoke, 47 millimeter, no bother. Yeah, can't even fucking... Do the turtle, the po, do the pote, tote. Why did I say that? <laughs> Me not speak English very well. It's the tote. You know tote? Yeah. The tote is this shelf thing, right? No. What? Tote is from... 
I'm an absolute dick. I, Nick has been drinking. So. <laughs> Google that. It's cool. G-Shock Man. tote. I swear. G-Shock tote. What is a tote? Tote? Yeah, T-O... I can't even spell, mate. T-O-T-E? Like tote? No. T... You know in Mario Kart, there's this... T- turtle? <laughs> turtle? Turtle. Tote. <laughs> 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 Fuck me! Right, um, I I have difficult spelling. So the T for t- titties, yeah. the O for Oscar, the A for Alpha, and the D for oh Toad. Toad. That G-Shock one. Toad. Yeah, that's a watch. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Are we plugged in now? In the fucking ah, fuck it. Yeah, the multicolored. Oh my god. Oh shit! Look at this fucking high tech shit. Oh, HDMI. This is. This I know is, what an uh, HDMI cable is. Though. This is so. Uh, now I can bring it up on the screen. Yeah, that's cool. What, what's that worth? They're going for about twelve hundred quid. Like, oh great, shit, son. great market. Like, they're going above uh, retail. Like, so they're quite hard to get get your hands yeah, on. Yeah, but that's a big watch, and you'll not lose a penny, and it's good. Like, it's Casio. It's fucking um, god dear boy. There it is, fifteen hundo, stock X. Yeah, it's just this multicolored yoke over here. It's cool. Right. You see the market of, of, of G-Shocks, including the ones that you're wearing, going up as well. Yeah, I like this that these are a little bit smaller. You know, it's not as big a fucking right. lump of shite on your wrist, but uh, especially in the summer, you know, you just want to wear a wee plasticky light one. It's great. Uh-huh. It's great. Um, you know, you know the crack of watches. Uh, what do you think of a lot of uh, proper timepieces being ruined by loads of precious stones? Are they still a functional piece, or are they just offensive? I made a comment about this in a YouTube video, right? <laughs> so you have aftermarket diamonds, right? You know yep. that these are, are diamonds that weren't good enough in a single piece of jewelry worth 50 quid. Okay. So these diamonds being, put, put, being, being sold, which they shouldn't be sold, should actually be destroyed, but they're being sold mm-hmm. like per like fucking kilo or in a bag, right? You can buy that. And then these guys put these diamonds on a watch, you okay, call it so aftermarket. I, I got, I got, I got mixed up on that. I thought that you were cracking up because the actual watch, the value of the watch is being fucked up because you were drilling all into it. Or yeah, whatever. as well. So yeah, that as, as well. well. And the it was now just the value of the diamonds, basically. But the diamonds are worth fuck all too. Exactly. Wow. So they destroy a very valuable piece with what, and it act like Billy Big Ball. With, with some right? of Claire's accessories, just like Exa- exactly. You can fucking. <laughs> Like, it's bonkers. And then you yeah, have factory set and fucking aftermarket and a Drake song and then Justin Bieber was wearing this. I think we were the only one that actually spotted that. That during that song, I don't know what it's song it is. a fake watch? No, like, the dial is fake. Like, the dial is not made by Rolex. And if something is not made by Rolex, it's not a Rolex dial. And if it's not a Rolex dial, but it says Rolex dial, it's a fake dial. Mm. You see what I mean? Um, yummy, yummy. But uh, in this song, what, what I don't know. James... James gave up ages ago. He's fucking, he's out of the game. <laughs> what was that song called from Drake? With Justin Bieber? Oh, come on, man. Come on, <laughs> mate. It's Justin Biebs. Just the Biebs. It's like, and then where he says, yeah, watch his factory, blah, blah, And then during that clip, it's he like. He actually says that? Yeah, yeah, song. yeah. No ah! joke. No joke. Bieber or Drake? No, no. During his Drake song, right, which... Justin Bieber does the video clip. Okay. Like, you need to... And, and the watch he actually shows is a... Uh, what? Pop star. Pop star, oh. indeed. Like, and then he, in the video, he shows his watch and actually... Mate, that's just a fucking piece of shit. That watch is ruined. What did you say? Don't play that. No, Why? don't play that because it's you have, you have your... You're uh, be demonetized and stuff. Because he says in that song, 42 millimeter made in Geneva. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so it was fake embarrassing yes but people just people don't realize that they see just diamond watch and immediately think diamonds are expensive rolex is expensive and it's like wow that must be them really expensive yeah and then people just show that off like like they're billy big balls with big balls right yeah. <laughs> um i don't know what point i wanted to make but it's basically shit yeah it's, right? it's shit they've just wrecked it yeah they wrecked not only wrecked the watch but also act like something that is worth something like it's not. Yeah. It's like, it's like, it, I'm sure there's like, what was that brand you said? Lang, uh, what is a it? long and soon. Yeah. There's, I've seen some of those pop up and they're like fucking, you know, like 
f- quarter of a million fucking euro or something. Aye. But, you know, if they were really flexing, they would just wear, you know, this little watch with the fucking leather strap. Exactly. And be like, oh, yeah, I could fucking put you out of business with this thing. You know, Aye. instead of that, all... That is what uh, what your man Ed Sheeran does, like. Yeah. He just wears... And everyone is always like, ah, it's just Ed Sheeran, he's a normal kid. Walks around with a fucking quarter of a million or a million quid watch or yeah. 1.6 million watch yeah, on his wrist. Still can't get a and haircut. people have no idea. Like, it still looks like uh, he just woke up, like, five weeks ago. That's the way to do it. He looks like a tramp, and then the watch is fucking ridiculous. Aye. Right. I am jealous of his collection, though. Like. Between him and the fucking the Paul brothers, get a fucking barber. You know, we, we hired someone... To kill him? What? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Like we actually hired a guy called Logan Paul, Paul Logan, and I, <laughs> and I am constantly making that mis- mistake. I genuinely, when I saw this, oh, on, in the shop, or yeah, something? yeah, no, yeah, we we, we yeah. got his CV in for the first time. It's like, like oh right, th- this is this is a fake CV, mate. Yeah, this is fake, Paul Logan. Yeah, because we were always taking the piss out of Logan Paul, right? Always. And there's like some YouTubers taking the piss here, mate. Yeah. Like genuinely, I just couldn't, I just couldn't, oh, I was pissing myself. <gasps> but he's, he's, a, he's a really, really good kid. But yeah, because his name, I torture him sometimes. That's so funny. It's funny, like Paul Logan, fuck me. Uh, let me see what else we got. I'm thinking of buying a vintage watch. Should I ask for a service history? No, 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 no. You you buy you don't buy the watch, buy the seller, right? So there's not a service history. Yeah. Like I mean, it's not like cars. You see what yeah. I mean? Um, just make sure that that the reputation of the seller is imma- like is impeccable, be it, like unbelievable. Because buying vintage, uh, you really, really need to know what you're doing there. Yeah. Yeah. So you really, really need to know what you're doing. Yeah. Um, because certain Rolex Daytonas, vintage ones. Uh, one cost uh, 200 grand and the other one that looks identical costs like 50 grand what's the difference yeah handset replaced dial replaced bezel replaced different hands stuff like that yeah it's fucking it's it's a really tricky one you really need to know what you're doing there and you need to be properly informed not just by one party but you need several opinions and then you can form your own opinion so yeah, say you want to buy a vintage. That would be so scary, like where you buy it from eBay or something. Uh, even and I would always recommend that even if, if some people come to us, say for a vintage Submariner, have it checked out by three other dealers mm. that are very specialized in vintage, so you know it's a, you know it's legit. Like, yeah, it must be the scariest shit of all time if you were like had something you know in the cart and you're like, all right then, oh yeah, yeah go yeah, ahead, yeah. yeah, and then you end up with some fucking. Heap of shit coming back. Uh, how much of the mirror? Oh, that's bad. That's a bad joke. 50k to spend. Do you get a selection of really nice watches or one absolute monster? Um, I know what I would rather have because I have zero patience or I'd rather have loads of watches. Yeah? Than just one big fucking beast of a watch. I would diversify. Yeah? Yeah, I would buy multiple. Yeah. yeah. I know exactly what I would buy. Like, go ahead. Fifty grand's quite a bit of money for this guy to be thrown about. I, <laughs> if you just get gifted, it's different. Like, you see what I mean? It's just like here's fifty k. Yeah. Gift. You can only spend it on watches. Only thing. I would buy brands that I would have never bought before. Okay. Ulysse Nardin. Yeah, Ulysse Nardin. Maxi Mariner. Like, such a cool watch, which I don't want to spend money on. Yeah. Normally, but. They're flipping class, like. Okay. Just just open up the collection a bit. Aye. Uh, holy shit, this is going to be an insane podcast. Can we have a specific Watch Talk Only podcast for us horology geeks? I think... Would it not, this is, I that's, mean, what else was it going to be, really? We, oh, well, I can't get real. I deep wanted to talk it. about life, about... We did talk about life, Yeah, man. about... We did talk about life. Uh, no, I can't say that word. Um... I am really like I because I kind of use language sometimes, which I have no idea that I use language, yeah, certain language, and I like not like you said that on your thingy, like bad language. Well, listen, I'd this never. Is, this is the safe space, you know. If you want to call Nala yeah, fucking cunt, you, you know, fill your boots. Uh, this is the space to do it. What's the craziest feature on a non-smartwatch? <laughs> Hands. It's the craziest feature. Yeah. 
because it's actually bonkers if you think about it. There's this one pivot, spins, and then there's hands, and it like, tells the time magically. Yeah. It's f- bonkers, mate. That just blew my mind. Yeah. I was there. I thought you were going to say something crazy there, but just... It's scary. Jeez. It's special, mate. Right, we'll rip through some of these. Let me see. Recently handed in my notice at work. Um, plan to go back to uni. What's your advice to people making the jump out of their comfort zones? Don't go to uni. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unless you want to be a doctor or something. It's like, like I literally have no qualification. None. Yeah. None. I do have my driving license. Yeah. I lost it twice, but I did get it back <laughs> at a certain point, right? But that genuinely... I get this question a lot. Yeah, we're well, studying this, and it's like, if you want to fit into a route that is planned, right? If you want to fit in the normal way, yeah, go to uni, mate. If you just want to do what you want to do, I just, I just think like things move too quickly in those years that you're in university. Right? You know the stuff that they're teaching you. It, it's like obsolete by the time you're done. I mean, I I can't speak out of experience. <laughs> yeah, you're like, I been, don't know. I, I am just like, I <laughs> I know a lot of people and a lot of friends of mine. I don't have a lot of friends, but I know a lot of people that have went to uni and it's like they're in this job because that's what they studied and now yeah. they're stuck in this job. I think that the way he said, like, you know, out of your comfort zone, when you have to, like, mate, sink or swim, you, you, you find different ways to oh. get by and then you know more stuff. Mate, I nearly lost a business on lockdown. Right, yeah. nearly went bankrupt, just the first lockdown. Like YouTube, like let me let me start at the beginning, right? When and to go back to the previous story, when I quit my job and started watches, mate, the hustle. Now looking backwards is the biggest education, right? Yeah. And Steve Jobs once said, like you can only connect the dots looking backwards. You need that hustle. Right, and you can only really push yourself when you do not have any other option than to succeed. Right, so that means that when you quit your job and you want to start your own business, that needs to be your only revenue stream, your only income. If you then have a side hustle next to it, you will never push yourself. You will never go through hell to really, really achieve what you always want to achieve. I had no other option than to succeed. Yeah. And I didn't succeed for the first year and a half. It was pain. It was sleepless nights. It is now 17 hours a day, seven days a week, no exception. First in, first out. Mm-hmm. First in, last out. Not first in, first out. First in, home first, a quarter past nine. Yes. Fucking see you later. First in, last out. First in, first out. That's what I usually say to you. No. Anyway, <laughs> um, but it is that hustle. It's that, that is the comfort zone. People say, yeah, like how, it is making sure that you do not have a safety net. Yeah. So you have to push yourself. You have to do it. Well, even like comedy is the same thing. I know people who, you know, they do stand up and they still have a normal job, but they never really fucking go for it. Why? Because they're like, I can do a bit of this, I can whatever. And then the people who just quit everything and just do that. Are, are you not Are you not scared on stage? Like I would fucking. Yeah. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. It's terrifying. Like, what goes through your mind? I'm, I'm very curious about this. We so, had this conversation so on, actually in the car. On Sunday, uh, I did a fucking sold-out gig at the Limelight. First gig back since September. And, like, that's, that's, a, that's like, you know, normally you would sort of break yourself in gently. You're like, I'll try and do a small gig. I'll do someone else's gig. That was my first gig back. You've been in the Limelight? Like, fucking... I have it's, been, a big, I have, it's a big room full of people, and... That I was shitting myself and a lot of the material that I was going to try was new so I'd never done it on stage before so you're you're going I don't even know if I can still do stand up I don't know if I'm still funny I can't remember any of this shit it seemed funny when I wrote it down the other day but now that it, I have to go on stage in 10 minutes I'm like this is bullshit and you're just like you know just that crazy like adrenaline going up your neck and everything and then you walk on stage and then it's fine. <laughs> it's like the biggest uh, is that is that like the first thirty seconds or does it take you like five or ten minutes? It's all to it's relax? uh I don't think you fully ever relax because you're still like you still have the adrenaline, but it makes you sh- once you can talk on stage, you're a lot you're a lot sharper and you know, tuned in. But 
when that adrenaline, when you're sitting on a sofa, like half an hour before the gig, just like, <gasps> what the fuck am I doing here? <laughs> but that's every, I mean, that doesn't really go away at all. No? No. Fuck me, this YouTube life, mate. It scares the living life out of me, like, every time. And like you're, where do you record in your house? No, 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 we have a full studio now, a full studio set up. It scares the living life out of me, like, like. Just talking to a camera? Yeah. Okay. No, but like, I, we now have, because, because Johnny or Jay, Johnny and Jay's behind the camera, so we have this conversation, so it feels, it actually makes me relax then. Yeah. Because then you have a normal conversation. Yeah. And it doesn't feel like there's a camera, but we need to get in, you need to get into that. Yeah. Like, I am, funny enough, it sounds really weird, but I'm actually quite shy. I'm not really like, don't look at me type of yeah. guy, you see what I mean? And then the camera, like, it's a battle every single day. And then, like, YouTube is 10 times more difficult than anything I've ever done before. Um, because it's, like, mentally, if you're mentally not, not like, you, 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 in seven days of the week, you can't feel good seven days a week. Oh, yeah. So sometimes there's shit on your mind and then you need to do this video and you need to record. And I'm not trying to be funny. I just try to be me. Yeah. See what I mean? I'm, if I'm funny or not, or if I'm, as long as I can add value, either by making entertain or yeah. um, sharing some wee nuggets of knowledge. Yeah. That's all. But it's so difficult. Well, that's, uh, yeah, I can relate to that. I mean, like, you, you when you have to be entertaining, all the time and there's days where like you know I had a pretty rough year last year you know with family stuff and everything and it's like you know you're standing back you, you know you, you quite literally might have come from like a hospital to a fucking gig and you're standing backstage and you're exhausted and you're like fucking doing star jumps and push ups I, trying to bring yourself up and then you walk on you're like hey what's the crack fucking down Patrick you know you want to fucking jump under a bus but yeah that you, is, that, you that, always that. have to be on for everyone i i know what you're talking about and what what happened this was with your wife i think yeah and generally if you're able to make that switch that is i think the biggest challenge that you can have as a like, that's that's unbelievable that you've overcome it was and, fucking tough like yeah. i mean that that and but that will rest that will stay with you for the rest of your life that's that's your experience now that is you've done that so you've you're mentally strong yeah, i mean yeah i suppose it yeah, probably doesn't get much tougher than that. Like, but um, for well, I haven't experienced anything like that. But yeah, you do have to just like put it aside for a second. Luckily, the podcast is kind of, you know, it's a it's a bit more personal, so you don't have to show up like Mister Fucking Showbiz. Not that I'm not right. anyway, but you know, you don't really have to put on an act doing a podcast. You can have a week where it's a bit more yeah. serious or whatever, and people come on like, "Fuck, this used to be a comedy podcast." <laughs> Gerald banter, mate. I know, banter my arse. Banter my arse. I want to talk about fucking depressing stuff. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a depressing cunt, so fucking... I didn't get laid this week. <laughs> yeah, or week. fucking ever. A lot ever. of these people. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, like, I genuinely, like, that whole thing you... Like, I'm only on that YouTube stuff. It wasn't, first of all, it wasn't my idea. Right? Who pushed you into that? Uh, it took me... The plan was on the table for months, right? And I said, no, it will never work. No, right. it will never happen. No, I'm not good enough. No, I can't do this. No, no, no. for months, mate. It could have been six, seven months if, if it, I think it was. Yeah. Like, and <laughs> at a certain point, I didn't have any other card to play. Either I'm going bust. So this was kind of like a lockdown thing? Yeah. Fucking hell. Isn't it crazy? Like, some people really you know, first of all, you wouldn't have been, you wouldn't have had that opportunity maybe or the time to even do that if there wasn't like a lockdown. YouTube saved my life. It saved my business. It allowed me to grow the business, but it's also my biggest fear factor. It's really weird. So like I didn't, the one idea I didn't believe in would ever work, turn out the idea that not only sa saved my business, but also gave me back another opportunity and another shot in the industry. It's and crazy. It's bonkers. But people are gonna, because of that presence, people will want the pride and pinion experience. Yeah. They could. They might go, right, I can buy, I can buy a watch somewhere else, but I'd rather go up here, we maybe have, see Nico, maybe, you know, fucking chat shake, get a photo. Uh, you know, that's more we, of an experience. No? We have people traveling all over the world to come to the shop. 
Genuine. Yeah. Like, like it's bunker. So we had a guy from New York in yesterday. Came fucking New York. I swear. How do you, how we got past the security fucking COVID stuff? You, I have working? no idea. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not asking, right? But like, <clears throat> genuine. Like we have people traveling to see, and that is, that is the most, he didn't buy a watch, right? But he just wanted to have that experience. He wanted to see the shop. That is the most incredible thing I most incredible compliment ever. I don't give a shit if you sell a watch. We, if, as lo, like my director does, because that's his yeah. job to worry about that. I just want to make sure that people come to Belfast, come to the shop, be an added value, be, be experience that that passion. That's all I want. And 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 YouTube allowed me. It's funny enough. The contrast is huge. Where there's some weird fucking dude shouting all sorts of things under the sun. Me. And then there's this shop, which is the most exclusive watches in the world, like half a million, million, a three million pound watch. Uh, in your shop? Yeah. And what, what like, is it? Like, uh, out of our PK uh, prototype. I okay. can't show okay. any photos. Okay. There's, but it's bonkers. So that contrast with this guy that shouts and does, and then yeah. this shop with the brand and with the crown, with like that passion, that is, people just still like, huh? Yeah, it doesn't compute. No, and it's like, because this industry, this, it's the most beautiful industry, but this industry is always seen as very snobby, and that is what's wrong with the industry. We're not snobs. Exactly. It's uh, it's just giving regular people access to that world where yeah. you wouldn't even, that's what I'm saying, like I was talking about, I didn't even know what a fucking automatic watch meant, or uh. was a certain, it's like, bringing it to people that would just never even think about think about watches or see it or know that lifestyle or know their options or anything because uh. it's very like a i'm sure it used to be very much like you know when you hear about waiting lists and people you know you have to be like a repeat customer in these places you're already a fucking rich guy that has it's 20 watches and they bring you in here's a cigar and you know they it's check funny. this out no one's in that world no, no one no one gets to see that how wrong is this no, you want to spend 10 grand on a watch, right? You go to this fucking jeweler's place, which I spoke about allegedly yeah. earlier, right? How wrong is this, right? I can sell you this watch at 10,000 pounds, but I want you to buy jewelry first. And then I maybe allow you to spend your hard earned money. Is that not fucking, would you ever accept that? So I'm walking down the street with a pair of fucking diamond earrings, wait, yeah. waiting on my Rolex to come in. <laughs> How wrong is this? They're, these authorized bollocks. Do they want to make sure that you're serious about it or something? Or? No, no, no. They they just they just want to make more money. Yeah. Like, it's bonkers. Like, no, you can't buy that watch. It's like, because it's in high demands, waiting list. It's all, waiting list is gone. It's now qualification list. So you're being qualified as a customer. This is what's wrong with the industry. You're qualified. Are you good enough? Are you sober? Are you yeah. fucking white enough? Black enough? Are you, like... Are you spending enough? Is your bank balance good? Do you not have a fucking criminal record? Like you're really? Yeah, no, I don't know about the criminal record because I mean, <laughs> uh, no, um, it's bonkers. That's what's wrong with this industry. And listen, you need to you need a spending history. So um, we had a customer in the other day. He was by these people I spoke about earlier, allegedly. Um, fucking bricks. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, some of the people that some of the people that work there are actually nice, right? Okay. But the the owner, the family, like, oh, so if you're ever watching so, this, yeah, we're not just the general thing. Really, personally speaking, yeah, the actual just the fucking owners. Fuck Mister, you. Will you fuck up, no, I mean, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I told you I was coming for you. Now I am, right? Am I gonna like come in the office someday? There's just a fucking horse head at the door. <laughs> 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 Oh, fuck. <laughs> they literally, Chris Suter, they went to Chris Suter, say, okay, please not talk, promote this guy. And I swear, mate, bonkers. The, I swear, stories behind that. But anyway, where was I in the story again? Oh, yeah, you need to, like, a customer came in the shop. Yeah, mate, I wanted to buy that watch, which they had available, but I had to buy this bracelet with diamonds first. And I went, he, the customer was, like, so, um, so annoyed by it that he literally paid the premium with us. He's like, I'm just so annoyed. Like, I mean, I am, I'm not, so you want me to spend money first before I'm maybe allowed to spend further money on this watch? Like, genuinely. Because they can sell these, there's there's 
20 million people. No, 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 I don't know. There's enough people that will buy that watch that day. So they try to take the piss out of it. Oh, right. And oh, sell it to the highest. Okay, so they're like, who's who's really serious? So, and instead of asking a premium, what the gray market does, yeah, they say, buy some jewelry. And what are you talk? What like is that a price because it's like a authentic so, place? So uh, it works this way, right? So Rolex sets the prices worldwide, right? Okay. So in every country, it's a little bit different. All in, got to do with it, like different currencies and stuff like that. But say a, a Rolex of America, seven thousand five hundred quid, right? And. Uh, you want to walk it. You want to say, hey, you say, if you worked your bollocks off, you can finally buy that watch. Walk into the shop. Ah, sorry, mate. It's, yeah, it's waiting list, mate. Years and years. Ah, uh, have you bought a Rolex before? No, no, no. It's gonna be my first Rolex. No chance. No chance you'll ever will ever sell you one. You saved your bollocks off yeah. to buy that watch. That was your crown jewels. That's what you wanted. And you're being turned away that way. But. It's because they can sell that watch to many other people. The, 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 the demand on that watch is significantly more, significantly higher than they're actually available. Right? So say they get an authorized dealer. Why don't they just fucking charge more up top? So that's what Rolex will not allow, doesn't allow to do. And that's what the great market does. That's what we do. Yeah. We buy them at higher prices and sell them at higher prices. Yeah. So that same sub manner, what at the authorized dealer is, is the cost seven and a half. We sell that same watch for 11. Yeah. But, but we have it directly available. But you just fucking stroll in and buy it and leave instead of playing all the, the Yeah, the exactly. Games. Play the games. Don't, you don't, they, they don't buy jewelry. You don't buy, you see what I mean? It's just about the watch. So there's a difference between a retail price and the market price, which usually is retail price and the market price is lower. You go to a clothing shop and say, I buy that shirt. Now, if you want to sell that shirt, you get less for that shirt, mm -hmm. right? So usually the market price, market value is lower than the retail value. But in the luxury watch world, not with all the watches, but with a lot of watches, it's the opposite. The retail value is... 10, but the market value is like 15. Yeah. Right? So, like, it's because there, it's because there's so much demand for that watch. That's nuts. It's bonkers. Like, and people are making money off that. Flippers, whatever, professional flippers buy that from, eh, suck up to their authorized dealers or, eh, like our friends allegedly do, sell it to uh, some contacts in Hong Kong. If you're watching, I know exactly who they are. So, this is getting real mafia. Uh, um, like sell them back door, which every authorized dealer does allegedly. Yeah, because I'm sure somebody could just walk in there and be like, I'd like 20 of these Yeah, for retail. And then they just take them straight to fucking exactly. five other places and like uh, sell it for more. But yeah. they're not allowed because they would lose their dealership. So what they do instead of asking more for that watch, they ask the customer, you need to buy for 50 grand of jewelry before you can buy this. They I just don't them. understand how they fucking, how would they propose that to someone like, oh, you like that watch? And they're like, do they openly be like yeah oh, openly yeah. no shame and it's like it is how do they word that just like hey you want that watch cool so does fucking everybody yeah you're gonna have to buy something else it, exactly and like they that. say it like that yeah and it is a joke mate it is a joke it would just be, you just end up with such a pile of shit that you didn't need, yeah. you know? <laughs> and then you finally have that watch you like, know you're set you can take a photo of this fucking new rolex you got this lovely like <laughs> fucking pearl necklacey thing uh, in your fucking Ted hair. It is just, uh, like, it is so wrong, right? And and that is, that's, someone asked me recently, will you ever want to become an, like an official dealer? I said, no fucking chance. I don't, I want to be free and independent and being able to give an independent advice and want to yeah. be able, if someone wants a watch, we'll have that watch for you tomorrow, mate. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. If we don't have it, we'll get it tomorrow. At any moment in time, we have about 150 to 200 watches in stock, ready to go. Yeah. And every high in demand, we have double in stock. But the, the key is that we can deliver. And yeah. if you, like, the market price is different than the retail price, fact. But the retail price doesn't apply unless you've spent 200 grand with your jewelers. So do you want to spend 200 grand first or do you want to buy your watch? What are we going to do? Especially when you have absolutely no fucking interest. As you said, I'm like a, most men, the only jewelry they wear. Yeah. is the, So you're buying something for your fucking wife or girlfriend or some, just to fucking get the watch you want. But the fact, the fact that you 
as 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 if you can afford a Rolex, you're you've uh, you've rel- you've you've some money, right? Yeah. But the fact the that these guys that have a bit of money are usually also have a set of brains, that these guys with a set of brains actually accept that shit from people. Are you actually excel- telling me seriously? I need to buy fifty grand of jewelry here yeah. to spend my then extra hard earned money. So I need to spend fifty grand to buy fifty grand of my hard earned money. Is this all? Is this like exclusively like Rolex nearly? Or is no, this it's Patek Philippe as well, Patek, yeah. and and Audemars Piquet, Richard Mille, uh, all this. Like, yeah, because like. I was thinking like if you went in to buy a fucking, you know, like a Speedmaster, they're not yeah. gonna give you all that shit, are they? The, no, no. The thing is. That's what's wrong with the industry, right? The question is, how do you solve it? Because you can shout, shout at it. Rolex should run their shops, Richard Me- like Richard Mille does. They're just their own boutiques, AP, their own boutiques. Yeah. Rolex is being run by jewelers, jewelers taking the piss. Rolex should stop doing that in every way possible. They should manage their own, get their own shops, manage their own shops, so it's fair and square. That's the only way to do that. Not by these bollocks, f- jammy, Fancy in the front door, jewelers, and then being an absolute shambles on the back end. <sighs> yes, I'm coming for you. God damn. Oh. Yeah, we've got two more questions. Let's get through them. <laughs> <laughs> is this, is it, am I talking too much? Or? No, not at all. Oh. No, not at all. Have you listened to this podcast? It's fucking trash. Yeah, tra- sometimes tra- too trash. Like. Uh, with the new tutor, Black Bay 58 Bronze, having the T fit clasp. Well, this guy's getting into it. <sighs> What are the chances you reckon that they will allow us to buy these adjustable clasps uh, for our standard black base? So sneaky to include in a boutique only watch. Have you seen that watch now? Have a I, look. The I think new I boutique seen, I, only. It's absolutely bonkers. I love that watch. I was like, this is just what, what porn. Am I, what am I looking for? This is like you watch, you porn, <laughs> you watch porn. What am I writing? You boutique watch only you pl- fucking what? Just do Tudor. Go to Tudor website. Tudor. Is, is this the one that people were giving shit because the thing was like so soft or something? What's it made of? It's bronze. Yeah. So, is it soft? No, no, it's, it's metal. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I, I skimmed past this fucking thing. There we go. There we go. If, if fucking cappuccino was a watch, <laughs> if cappuccino was a watch, <laughs> it's like fucking. If cappuccino was a watch, just brown. Uh, <laughs> Nothing against brown watches. Like there we are. I think it's absolutely gorgeous, mate. It is nice, mate. I've seen a photo on a Twitter Instagram. I was like, whoa, this is sexy as fuck, boy. Nice. Yeah, uh, this watch will go for a significant premium, and this will stay as a significant premium. This is a watch you can only buy in the Tudor boutiques only, so dedicated Tudor boutiques, which are not run by Tudor, by the way, which are run by Tudors. Oh, for fuck's sake, here we go. We're starting so the game. it's again, it's another, it's another waiting list. This is just, Tudor's just introducing another waiting list for a yeah. different watch. Okay. Sneaky. Like, not obtainable at retail, 100%. Sneaky buggers. All right. Which is like I love Tudor, like I think it's genius, like. So what the fuck was he talking about? A clasp or something? I've no idea what he was talking about. Yeah, fuck it then. Tell him to drink a little bit less. Drink, hey. Can you reply to him? Take. Can I reply to him? Just like type in. Just type yeah, in. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Chances you reckon they'll allow us to buy these adjustable clasps for our standard black base? I don't know what that means. Uh, I know what a standard black base is like. Yeah. And I know what a clasp is, but I do not know the context of this question. I don't know. Uh, would a clasp not... Oh, fuck, I don't know. Uh, right, we've got a couple more questions. And we'll leave the big one to the end. What is the cheapest watch you would buy slash own? Uh, fucking class, that one. That one. What do they run for? 15 like, quid? Retail's nineteen ninety at Casio website. And uh, we, we like, funny enough, I think we sold the world wreck. We done a world. If the Guinness book is Guinness book of records, the proper Guinness, yeah. like is that Guinness drink? Like I think so. Is it? Yeah, the Guinness World Book Record thing unit. <laughs> um, well, if this was a thing, I would have. We would have, as Pride and Pinion, sold the most F ninety one God tier watches in an hour, ever. Jeez. We sold about a thousand of those. Jesus. Christ. In one go, like it was bonkers. And when people receive this 
from you is there any yeah a hand a letter like oh yeah it's like okay. there's a letter and it's sign it and it's nice like it's i want that personal because they're they they you could buy that watch cheaper yeah like on amazon you but put the premium people want people want fifteen hundred quid. <laughs> no, no, this people want to support us as well as a business. Yeah. You see what I mean? And I, 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 need to put time in that because that I appreciate that that means the world to me. Yeah. So at least I need to do something extra. Very cool. Very cool. I think my wife has a pink one of those. Is that possible? No, that's you. Yeah, but yeah, you I'd, just wear, I'd wear blame a pink her. Watch. Like I don't give a fuck. Have you seen the state of my shoes? Um, no. Let me. See. What is it? All right, no comment. Yeah. <clears throat> we'll move on. Uh, final question. Why is... Who, am I saying this right? Who blow? What is it? Why do we even need to have this conversation? Why is it the worst brand ever? What is it that makes who blow, who blow, who blow, such pieces of shit? And, and that'll be our last question. I wrote a... Um, Book on... <laughs> <laughs> who blow. The watch for... The watch for people with more money than sins. Okay. Right? Trilogy. Trilogy, part one. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. I'm building you this watch, right? And this is, it's very clear. I'm building you this watch, right? Put this movement in. Oh, shit. Oh, I'm building you this watch. Right. I don't want to make that movement myself because it costs me too much time. I'll call ETA. Hey, ETA. Hello. Hello. This is really weird what I'm doing at the moment, but... You get the point. We'll animate it. Yeah. So, hey, ETA, can I have a movement? Yes. That's then $150. Oh, yeah. No worries. Get them put in the watch. Done. 15 grand. Oof. Right? But now as a Hamilton does the same. Listen, mate, I want to buy a really affordable, I want to sell a really affordable watch. Can I have a movement? Exactly that identical movement. Yeah? And Hamilton gets this movement. Ah, puts in their watch. Sells it. 800 quid. Mm -hmm. That's why. Yeah. They're the scumbags of this industry. Yeah. What's the fur coat? No knickers? It's like being <laughs> fucked without a condom. I swear. <laughs> With 10 S... Uh, how do you call them? STDs. STDs. That one. 10. Like, fuck. It's like you could not You could have kissed me first. You see what I mean? Yeah. That type of thing. It's bonkers, mate. I also, I also feel like, you know, if you had a slight knowledge of watches, you could name a couple of models from each thing, you know, oh, there's a Rolex this, whatever, whatever, Tudor, whatever. The Hublot watches, I'm like, well, I don't even know any sort of, do they have like a standard sort of well-known model? They, 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 they the have this limited edition structure where everything is limited edition, but then it's limited edition to like fucking 5,000 pieces. That's not fucking limited, mate. What are you talking about? <laughs> like, oh, fuck limited edition. Fucking 1 million pieces only. 30 thousand watches of yeah work. get the fuck <laughs> climb a tree leave me alone right it's bonkers like for me the fact that hamilton sells exactly a watch with exactly the the identical movement yeah as hublot one at 800 one at 15 grand it's just bonkers it's how to do this right but th they're not willing to do that yeah people don't know go into hublot think they buy a quality watch and allegedly they're not quality i think it's uh again the only place I heard it was on like a load of rap songs. Yeah. And I think people, they, if they have any demand, it's because fucking rappers wear them ah. and, you want, and you want to be cool. And it has a rubber strap. I mean, you can, what yeah. else is made out of rubber? You yeah. can buy for a fucking pack of 20. I mean, uh, <laughs> what it, at least the Hamilton comes on a bracelet. Like, you see what I mean? It's a bit more pack of 20? What sort of weekend are you having? Uh, Jesus. Uh, I don't do So you're, uh, you're not, but you're not, <laughs> You're not into the rubber straps at all? Oh, fuck. Nah, I'm listen. sure they have a time and a place. No, it's it's fine. Like, like I mean, I, ju I just, the thing is, I just want to speak the truth, right? And there's so many dark sides of this industry, and I just, the only thing I just do, and it became a meme on its own, right? Yeah. And uh, I love it above anything else. I'm just fucking surprised that they haven't sent me a letter yet. I was going to say, have you not heard a anything of assist from or whatever you call that? And I was like, they haven't said, I'm just surprised. But... Like, they still advertise on our channel, so I'm just like, why the fuck are you still really? doing it? Yeah, fucking, so, just like, got a mid-roll, Hublot. Yeah, I swear, <laughs> I swear, it's the weirdest thing ever. So oh, they fuck. kind of they kind of have this no publicity, for good, any publicity is good publicity, right? But no, I, I think it's shambles in every way possible. And then, I don't know how it, it, it is even possible, but their only in-house movement 
or one of their only in-house, fully in-house created movement that they made themselves instead of calling ETA. It's called You Space Nico. Are you shit? You? I'm. I'm not shitting me. Shitting. I swear. And I was like, this is bonkers, mate. Right? <laughs> it's just fucking bonkers. Look it up, Hublo. You. I swear. It's the weirdest thing ever. And I was like, this is just. This is a joke, mate. <laughs> it's a joke. Mm. You think they'd send you one for the crack, like? Yeah, there's someone chatting about the. Yeah, what is unique about the Unico movement? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but like, like I mean, um, I, 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 I'm just like you have the. I can't even describe it. I, every time we're on, uh, talking about Hublot, I can't even string one sentence together. Like, it's just, usually it's I just f- fart at shit. P- post P- PTSD, you talking about? <laughs> I have issues. I just get, nah, I, I, I hate it with a passion. I pride myself to have never sold a Hublot in my life. Will I fuck ever sell one? <laughs> you, are, you give me a fucking million quid, won't happen. Well, I think we have to end it there, folks. <laughs> <laughs> what a great place to stop. We've chatted for an hour and a half. Did we? Yeah. No. Cheers for coming on, man. No worries. Um, if, you I appreciate a, if you need a luxury watch in Belfast, hit up Pride and Pinion. And just one special thanks to our sponsors this week, Hublot. Um, fuck um, off. Thank you. Fuck <laughs> <up>. <laughs> right? No, I here, appreciate that, mate. It was cool no to worries. meet you as well. Like, no mean, worries. We'll fist bump it. Box. You, my arms are... Do I have anything else? Here, nice. Bro? Are you giving away these watches to the... I could think of something to do, yeah. Patreon people? Yeah. Stuff? Elves of Cloths? Oh, I could think of something. All right. Thank you. Thanks very much, man. <laughs>